What do Harry Potter, Katniss Everdeen, and Frodo all have in common with the heroes of ancient myths? What if I told you they are all variants of the same hero? Do you believe that? Joseph Campbell did. He studied myths from all over the world and published a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces, retelling dozens of stories and explaining how each represents the monomyth or hero's journey. So what is the hero's journey? Think of it as a cycle. The journey begins and ends in the hero's ordinary world, but the quest passes through an unfamiliar, special world. Along the way, there are some key events. Think about your favorite book or movie. Does it follow this pattern? Status quo, that's where we start. One o'clock, call to adventure. The hero receives a mysterious message, an invitation, a challenge. Two o'clock, assistance. The hero needs some help, probably from someone older, wiser. Three o'clock, departure. The hero crosses the threshold from his normal, safe home and enters the special world and adventure. We're not in Kansas anymore. Four o'clock, trials. Being a hero is hard work. Our hero solves a riddle, slays a monster, escapes from a trap. Five o'clock, approach. It's time to face the biggest ordeal, the hero's worst fear. Six o'clock, crisis. This is the hero's darkest hour. He faces death and possibly even dies, only to be reborn. Seven o'clock, treasure. As a result, the hero claims some treasure, special recognition or power. Eight o'clock, result. This can vary between stories. Do the monsters bow down before the hero, or do they chase him as he flees from the special world? Nine o'clock, return. After all that adventure, the hero returns to his ordinary world. 10 o'clock, new life. This quest has changed the hero. He has outgrown his old life. 11 o'clock, resolution. All the tangled plot lines get straightened out. 12 o'clock, status quo, but upgraded to a new level. Nothing is quite the same once you're a hero. Many popular books and movies follow this ancient formula pretty closely, but let's see how well The Hunger Games fits the hero's journey template. When does Katniss Everdeen hear a call to adventure that gets the story moving? When her sister's name is called from the lottery? How about assistance? Is anyone going to help her on her adventure? Hamish. Hey, what about departure? Does she leave her ordinary world? She gets on a train to the capital. Okay, so you get the idea. What do you have in common with Harry Potter, Katniss Everdeen, and Frodo? Well, you're human, just like them. The hero's journey myth exists in all human cultures and keeps getting updated because we humans reflect on our world through symbolic stories of our own lives. You leave your comfort zone, have an experience that transforms you, and then you recover and do it again. You don't literally slay dragons or fight Voldemort, but you face problems just as scary. Joseph Campbell said, in the cave you fear to enter lies the treasure you seek. What is the symbolic cave you fear to enter? Auditions for the school play? Baseball tryouts? Love? Watch for this formula in books, movies, and TV shows you come across. You will certainly see it again, but also be sensitive to it in your own life. Listen for your call to adventure. Accept the challenge. Conquer your fear and claim the treasure you seek. And then do it all over again. What's your favorite story? Um, Harry Potter. Okay, all right. Well, let's go with Harry Potter. You got one back there. Star Wars. Okay. Well, yeah. How, Star Wars, Harry Potter. How about Blue Shirt? Tinkerbell. Great example, too. Yeah. Um, all right, so we'll, we'll go with Harry Potter because I think everyone knows it. So who's the hero of that story? Harry. Yeah. And does the story start with Harry in kind of an equilibrium in a comfortable place, right? Just like this, oh, sorry, I got the clicker. Um, and, and then something happens to disrupt his, uh-oh, trying to get to the, what am I doing wrong? 
that, that's what I wanted, thank you. Um, so, and then does he depart into some new special world? Yeah, right? It, Hagrid shows up and they get on a motorcycle and go to Hogwarts. And then he has, you know, trials. And then in whichever book it is, right, there's some sort of crisis, some sort of, you know, moment uh, where, where everything pivots um, and everything hangs in the balance. And then, spoiler alert, pretty much Harry wins each time. Uh, and then, you know, back to the ordinary world. And actually, Harry Potter is a, a great example of this formula because for the first, whatever, five or six books, he always ends up back at the Dursleys' house for summer, right, for summer holiday. Um, and so you get that return to equilibrium. But um, th this, you know, this pattern works in, in so many, you know, ancient myths and, you know, modern stories and movies. Um, it pretty much, pretty much works every time. And as a, as a test of this claim, this is not planned, we have not rehearsed this, but these are two books um, written by Ben Langdon, who will be speaking later today. Oh, and Eliza as well, great. So um, let's talk about one of these books. Which book should we talk about? Eliza, as co-author, which book should we talk about? Miranda Contract. All right, so uh, who's the hero? Let's do Charlie Conti, that works better. <laughs> Sir? Right, and then does something happen to disrupt her life? Uh, yep, she goes to high school, meets new people. Um, her dad then shrinks himself to about that size. <laughs> okay, that sounds interesting. Um, and does she, you know, eventually have to face her greatest fear and overcome it? Um, yep, so she's got trials along the way, like uh, high school cliques and things like that. But yeah, then a, uh, a big bad evil turns up in town, and yep, she does have to overcome it. Okay. Great, great. Uh, so with some assistance there. Um, no spoilers, but at the end, does she come back, you know, smarter, stronger, and looking to help her community? Okay. Great, great. All right, so, um, you know, there, there are exceptions to this rule, but they all play off of the, the same formula. Um, you know, they may rearrange the order a little bit um, or, or bend it, but, um, you know, Pretty much we're working with the same, and it seems, it seems artificial, right? It seems like this you know, scientific thing, but really it's second nature to us. Um, Bob Harris yesterday was talking about how we perceive reality um, in, in this way. We absorb these facts, and we're, our brains are subconsciously, constantly trying to organize these facts into uh, a narrative, right? A storyline, and then kind of fortify that along the way. So, you know, as an English teacher and, and as a writer, you know, I'm, I'm fascinated by this, this plot structure, but what interests me even more is, you know, the question, does this happen in our real lives? Like, does this, um, you know, cycle occur in real life? Any, any thoughts on that? Yeah, okay, I mean, I think we saw some, some great examples yesterday. Um, anyone, so this is the, where the quiz comes in. So if you were here yesterday and you remember any of these stories, I want you to just kind of briefly um, bring, them, bring them back to, to everyone's memory. Who can help me out here? Help me out. Throw me a, throw me a line. Just, just yeah, pick one of these. Yeah, you got one? Which, one? which one can you tell us about? Mark Ellis had to overcome, after his football career finished, had to face the challenges of getting over drug addictions and things like that, and then has come out on the other side and is now helping other people with his foundation. Yeah, a great example. Yeah, super example. Um, you know, be beating, beating the odds with cancer twice, um, but also, you know, having to lose something on the way, right? A few feet of intestines, you know. Um, but, but gaining, you know, this, this power to help other people, you know. And um, Sean, you know, not the hero of the story, but the assistant, the mentor, right, helping you know, Aboriginal men who have been in contact with the justice system to accept a call to adventure, to discover their cultural identity, and to use that to transform them and become better men in their communities. So, you know, this, this storytelling, this formula has so much power in our, in our real lives, not just in our imagination. Um, and if I have enough time, I want to tell, I do. I'm going to tell you a story about 
of my life, uh, actually how this video came to be. So um, my wife and I have two kids, uh, our daughter Alex and our son Logan. And when he was in grade five, about 10 years old, he, um, he wanted to quit school and become a professional skateboarder, right? 10 years old. So um, the, the reason was, you know, he hated school. He's, he's got dyslexia, like 10% of the population, which means that, you know, your brain is wired in such a way that um, reading and writing, you know, takes, takes longer and it takes a lot of effort. So for him, you know, since second grade, he'd seen his classmates and his friends, you know, learning to, to read and write so effortlessly, just all around him, just, you know, buzzing through paragraphs. And he, he came home and he's telling us, you know, I'm the, I'm the stupidest kid in school. And he believed that. So, you know, this is a real struggle. What, what do we do about this? And we kept trying to, you know, specialists and help and so on. But um, it all came to a, to a point one day when, you know, all the kids had to pick a state in the United States to study. And he picked North Dakota. So we had this long-term project with, with the deadlines um, on the calendar, on the refrigerator. And then the weekend before it was all due on Monday, we're finishing up dinner Saturday night. And I say, okay, you know, take out your poster board and let's finish it, you know. And he, uh, he looks away, you know, I, I forgot it at school. I'm, it's stupid anyway. I'd, I'd learn so much more by just going to North Dakota. I wish I could just quit school and be a skateboarder. Pretty much the same conversation every homework assignment that whole year. But um, this time, my wife, Jessie, said, um, wait a second. What if you went skateboarding in North Dakota? What if you went skateboarding in all 50 states? Crazy, <laughs> crazy idea. But what, what just happened, you know, call to adventure. I said, this is not going to, you know, don't say that, right? I mean, we don't have money for that. You know, Jesse had just started a nursing career. I was teaching at a university part-time and working construction on building sites to make ends meet. But Jesse wouldn't let it go. You know, she said, listen, school's not working. You're a teacher. You know how he learns. You're doing this. So we actually packed up the car, and Logan and I kind of homeschooled through all 50 states and skateboarded in every one of them. And he was right, you know, he learned a lot more uh, doing that than he would have inside of a classroom that whole year. And along the way, we met people, um, you know, just like Mel had talked about, that, that helped us and put us in, in contact with, you know, other people in the skateboarding world, right, Logan's special world. And by the time we got to California, we had an invitation to spend the day with one of Logan's skateboarding heroes, Mike Vallely, Mike V, if any of you guys... I have a picture with Logan and Mike V with his big red beard. And the look on Logan's face, he no longer thought of himself as the stupidest kid in school. You know, that, that journey transformed him, and it changed the way I think about stories. Um, so, you know, it led me to, to write this lesson, which Ted made into a video. And, um, and it also, you know, led me as a, as a parent and as a secondary school teacher, to think about these stories and how they instruct us to, to live heroically, right? To, to be brave and resilient and selfless. And, um, and I think that there's no time that's more critical for that than those teenage years, which are actually this rite of passage from childhood to adulthood. And we heard about uh, a couple of stories like that yesterday, right? Um, where, where Mel and Makara, you know, both started their story in this kind of place of equilibrium, and then something happened, right? Friends committed suicide, or, you know, I, I, I need to tell my parents about who I really am. And that launched this struggle that actually, you know, led to and manifested itself in act an actual road trip, right? So there's this interior journey and then also this exterior journey um, around the country in both cases. And that, 
that's the kind of thing that um, you know, I'm, I'm talking about in the book that I wrote, uh, Mentoring Teenage Heroes, which is yours for free if you sign up for the Hero Roundtable Patreon. So, um, and actually, if you'd like to uh, have a go at looking at your own life in terms of the hero's journey and kind of sketching out uh, your own you know, biographical hero's journey, then please join me um, after lunch in the workshop. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.